CeCe's wants to be more like Chuck E. Cheese. Hello, this is Jonathan Mays, Editor-in-Chief of Restaurant Business. And in this week's episode of A Deeper Dive, I speak with Jeff Hetzel, the president of the pizza buffet chain CeCe's. Jeff has been with the brand for 30 years in both corporate roles and as a franchisee. And this is a great episode. We talk about the chain's rapid move into games. The company in recent uh, years has been adding more and more games to its restaurants. That idea began with franchisees, and we talk about what the idea has done to operators' profits. Hint, quite a bit. But it has also gradually turned the pizza buffet concept into an entertainment destination, much like the aforementioned Chuck E. Cheese. We also talk about labor costs and technology, and you will find out what my favorite type of pizza is, but you will have to listen to find out what that is. You will also find out what the most expensive pizza to produce is, and you'll never guess what that one is. So we're talking pizza and games on a deeper dive, so please have a listen. Well, thank you very much for having me today, Jonathan. All right. Uh, I'm uh, based on uh, your shirt. I could see that you work for CeCe's. What's going on in CeCe's land? Everything. <laughs> uh, lots of uh, changes, lots going on, and it's been an incredible uh, year last year and getting off to a great start this year. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I think one of the more interesting things that CC has done in recent years is becoming more of a of a of a games concept. Um, how is that going? Is that that's still uh, that's still something uh, uh, big for you guys? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the game thing has really uh, been awesome for us. We've had games in the stores from the very beginning, but really now uh, games have changed so much. Uh, the, the games that folks have in their phones for a long time may have been better than what we had in the restaurants. So we've really invested heavily in it. The entertainment uh, segment of our industry has gone, you know, crazy, and there's so many options. But you know, we always, uh, you know, had a really good focus on uh, the quality and the pizza and those kind of things. But the games were always just relegated to kind of a small, little, tiny bit of real estate in the stores. And now we have one, two, three, and we're building a 4,000 square foot game room actually at one of our uh, new locations under construction in Georgia. So the games has become a huge deal. The franchisees love it. They've let it. Most of the great ideas always come from the franchisees in the stores anyway. So, you know, they've, uh, they've mm -hmm. let it. They really embrace it. We had a franchise advisory council meeting yesterday. And a good couple of hours of it spent on how we can enhance and leverage the games to really uh, make it a wonderful dining experience for the whole family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, as an aside, if you think of, you know, you think of some of the best ideas, uh, certainly in the in the in in the fast food industry over the years, the egg McMuffin, uh, the Big Mac, the <laughs> Subway's five dollar foot long, though Subway franchisees don't like that very much now. Uh, and you know, you probably come up with a massive list if you give me long enough, and I won't do that here. But we can come up with a ton, a huge number of things, ideas that came from franchisees. And uh, if you got a good, always says to me, if you got a really good group of active and um aggressive operators they'll come up with a bunch of ideas for you oh yeah that's no doubt i actually went to the uh irwin pennsylvania had i think the big mac museum uh restaurant i ate there one time and uh no you're right the great ideas do come from the field and haven't been with cc since 1992 uh the gentleman that i ran a store with in the very beginning now he's a 20 store franchisee and he's also a major proponent of the the game, uh, the game part of it, he's on the FAC and he's really led the way for all of our franchisees. And the games has really got the franchisees back excited about growing stores, about what that does for the financial model for us. So, yeah, we we listen and love to listen to our FAC and all of the franchisees in general. So, yeah, well, so so let's 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 talk a little bit about what does it do for the model. Well, from a financial standpoint. We had, in a lot of cases, over time, we there was really no leadership or, or, or partnership with the franchisees in the games in the stores. So it just became kind of an also-ran, older, you know, dusty, if you will, kind of 
uh, token-based game room. And from a financial model side, they're investing in games that drive play. We've gotten rid of the tokens and a focus on card readers, much like a, a Dave and Buster's. The, the things that you put inside of those games are super critical to their success. Kids love to win. Parents love to win uh, a sloth with a CC shirt on it or, or great, uh, great things like that. But from a financial standpoint, as you've had so much pressure in our industry, the pressures of labor, the pressures of food cost and, and all of those kind of things, the games is a highly profitable segment of our, of our uh, restaurant. And it's really taken that spare footage in every one of those stores and making it a, a partner, you know, along with a quality, you know, product, uh, drive that, that profitability. But it takes very little labor. You're already paying rent. You're already paying for the air conditioning and the heat and those kind of things. You're, the games work themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now you're you're going to the point where where you're actually expanding it. Like a 4,000 square foot facility is a little bigger than my belief of a, of a typical CC's, yeah? Oh yeah, our typical restaurants across the country probably average 4,000 square feet. The franchisees are taken on if the space is empty next to them on the dining room side, they're mm -hmm. expanding into that space and building a party, uh, uh, really a place where you can have parties and, and really focus in on driving in more of that that kind of business. Um, and we've been really supportive of it because the franchisees have gone out and done it. They've been successful with it. They show us their results. We collect all the financials. So we're kind of up to speed on everything and how it works in their models. But it's really been a, you know, a game changer for us uh, as far as getting franchisees excited about remodeling and growing uh, the brand. So it's been really cool to watch and be a part of and see. Did you intend that pun? Yes, sir. That was part of the. Uh, that's part of the. Uh, that was part of the show tonight. Nice, nice, awesome. <laughs> so now, does it take some pressure off of? Um, does it take some pressure off of uh, your um, off off of the food to have that? You know, because games are very profitable. You know, once you get the game paid for, you know, based on the numbers I've always seen at Dave and Buster's and Chuck E. Cheese over the years. You know, that, that that gaming room for those guys is just insane. Um, and uh, does that take some pressure off the food side? It absolutely, it absolutely takes pressure off the food side, the labor side, all the costs. Drives down your occupancy cost. It really is an unbelievable um, asset to the financial model. And I think even more importantly, it drives traffic because there's more reasons to come if there's something else to do besides you know, just eating and love the folks who just come in and eat, but it's really important. You know, we're not trying to be the big box, uh, big game thing, but for the franchisees in the right market and the right mindset that want to take on that challenge, then we're more than happy to help support that. I would say the average franchisees probably expanded their game rooms to 500 to a thousand square feet, some a little bit more, but we do have those larger ones. And if a franchisee wants to do that, we have a model of a store that, that we want from a buffet standpoint, a carryout standpoint. We do a lot of catering and those kind of things as well. But if a franchisee wants to build those larger game rooms, we've largely been supportive of it. I'm a franchisee besides running CCs and our distribution company here. Uh, I'm also a franchisee at two stores. And so right along the side, the franchisees, I've invested uh, into the games. And to your point about the payoff, you know, typically in a store, when if you go spend $100,000 in games in 12 months or right around there, our experience has been that we've recouped that. So it's really a great, a really great investment. Uh, mm -hmm. and, it's, uh, and you have to keep investing in it. You have to rotate the games. I had a meeting this morning about in Dallas, Fort Worth. We've got eight corporate stores here. We're going to shuffle the games, buy some new games. And the technology shows you what people are playing and, and how often they're playing it, what breaks down the most. So you're constantly looking at those kind of things um, while your your major focus is on keeping them faithful because that's our that's our bread and butter. That's who we are. Yeah. The games are kind of a different business than operating a restaurant, I'd assume. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So now you're you're a franchisee. Uh, CC's is owned by a couple of franchisees, a couple of good guys. What does that do for us? How does that make? How has that changed CC's? You've been in the business for uh, a few years. How has that changed the the business being owned by a couple of franchisee guys with franchisee experience? Well, I think the part. I think the partnership. I think you know being partners in the company with folks that that have uh, that walk in the same shoes you do every day. I think. I, I've said this before. I really believe that if you run a company, you, you should own a franchise of it because I can sit at any meeting with anybody any day and they can talk about what they think should happen in the stores. And I can immediately deduce that to how much it's going to cost, how operationally difficult that would be. But it's really ingrained in me. And SSCP uh, and my partner, you know, Sunil, who I deal with, you know, uh, the most. Um, he's a franchisee of 100 Applebee's and 60 Sonics and all these other brands. Mm -hmm. And uh, he knows the things he likes and doesn't like from a franchisee, franchise or relationship. And so he's been a really un unbelievable sounding board for me. The entire team at SSCP has been a great sounding board, you know, for me, um, because we're, our belief systems are very much the same. Uh, that, you know, franchising is a system that you get involved in and it's designed for you to have a return on that investment, right? And so it's really important you're constantly mindful of the of the financial model. Everything we do should either drive sales, cut costs, or enhance the the experience of the guest and keep our team safe. Mm -hmm. You know, everything you do, that's what franchisees want to do. And then by listening to your system, you know, having a two-day franchise advisory council meeting with people from all over the country in your in your in your office telling you, "Hey, this is what we're seeing," or "This is how what we think." There's a lot of change going on in CCs. You know, last year we invested in a new ERP system. We put a new point of sale system on every single counter. We've invested very heavy heavily on technology, and now this year we're leveraging it. So you have a franchise system that's never had a unified POS system has never had a loyalty program that was unified throughout the whole brand, never had a, a, a party and, and a, a birthday platform. So we're rolling out all this technology and we're all hypersensitive to, we wanted to enhance their ability to drive sales, uh, cut costs and, and improve their financial models, but at the same time, not be disruptive. So it's a, uh, it's a balancing act and, I'm one of those everything now kind of people. I want to move and I like to make decisions in a, in a fashion where we're not wasting, you know, too much time, but, you know, bringing the franchise advisory council along, bringing the franchisee along is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you, you mentioned a loyalty program. Tell me about that. Well, we've never, when you don't have a unified POS system, it's very difficult to have that loyalty program. And our it's amazing how many folks come into CC's multiple times a week. We have very, very loyal, raving fans. And uh, for lunch, you know, we're $8.99, all you can eat, pizza, pasta, salad, dessert. We'll make you whatever you want, whatever kind of pizza you want. And at the same time, you can have as much as you want. And uh, I was talking to someone the other day and we were talking about $8.99 and they're like, wow, this smoothie I just, I have in my hand right now cost 15 bucks. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, folks, you know, part of what is ingrained in CC's DNA is we're the best pizza value anywhere. The best pizza value anywhere, TV, PVA, it's on the license plate of my car. It's on the wall in our restaurants. It's on our pizza boxes. We have to be an unbelievable value, but it, you know, value has a lot more to do than price. It's about quality. It's about variety. Um, I think uh, value is, you know, also equates to fun. Uh, so, you know, it's really, really critical to us that we always remain the best pizza value anywhere, but you have to continue to innovate. You have to embrace technology and games and, and be willing to look at things outside of the scope of what you've normally done. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to, you mentioned, you mentioned, uh, labor. I want to ask you a little bit about that. What's, what's, uh, from your perspective, what's the state of, what's the labor environment right now? Like, think, what's that you like? Know, I, from my, from my perspective, obviously we all were really struggling with it over the last couple of years, you know, folks just opted in to not, you know, working and those kind of things. But 
you know, the available labor pool was very small. We were not struggling with that. We were really mm -hmm. fortunate that through a partnership with our uh, SSCP and our partners and with uh, our training department, each year we have a really big hiring push where we go out and spend uh, money, you know, out there in the media. We've got a very robust hiring system that we utilize uh, for all of the restaurants, for managers and team members. But I think the most important thing is not so much the hiring, it's the keeping. Uh, yeah. Most most brands, if they haven't already, had better immediately start focusing on the frontline folks. It's way easier to keep an unbelievable manager, prepper, cook, bus, you know, bus person. All of those team members to us are very valuable. And the first thing I do when I go into a store, I go seek out the dishwasher. I go seek out the cook and the cut, shake their hands, talk to them, find out how they're doing. How are we treating you? How am I treating you? Right? It's our business. And uh, it's amazing how the franchisees have responded to. They know they've got to pay more. They know they've got to pay more attention. And they know they got to pay more time with them. And, uh, you know, working, working on training them and uh, one of the biggest things I think people miss in our in our business, and I know when we do a good job of it, I know when we do a bad job of it, is just that orientation, you know, welcoming them to the family, getting them all the things they need, helping them understand when that first check is coming. But from a hiring perspective, you know, quite frankly, you know, we've been pretty solid on that. Now, different parts of the country, it's different, mm -hmm. but largely in the areas that we are. Uh, hiring uh, over the last year or so and, and, and to right now, um, I would say, you know, corporately, we're fully, you know, fully staffed in all the corporate stores and the franchisees. I'm hearing much the same sentiment that they have the tools they need to go get people when they need them. Mm -hmm. Now, have you done anything like have you, you done anything, though, to, to try to make things try to uh, make your operations more efficient? I think I think the technology is the biggest thing that we can do. You know, we had fairly antiquated systems, not only inside of our corporation and our distribution company. We were running on 2013 NAV for an ERP system, and now we have 2024 Business Central. And technology takes a lot of the rough spots out. It really takes away all the manual processes. If you have somebody standing in a walk-in with a pencil doing anything anymore, you're, you're a decade behind where you should be. But I think, you know, from a technology standpoint, uh, we've worked on that. Uh, we went back and the founder of the company, Joe Croce, who is, uh, is uh, still somebody that we have come to our conferences and that we're really close to him. You know, his focus was always on quality. So we restored all of our original quality stuff. And in doing that, we've also made sure that we tried to take steps out of recipes and, and those kind of things to make it a little more simple to get a consistent product across the whole brand. You know, buffets are inherently hard. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you put that food up there and if it's not the food that folks want, it doesn't turn. You know, the most expensive pizza we have at CeCe's, I ask people, hey, what's the most expensive pizza at CeCe's? And they'll say, oh, it must be your Supreme or how about a double pepperoni, double cheese? And it really is the pizza nobody eats. So <laughs> one of the things you can be, one, you know, that you got to ask the guests what they want. And if you if I come if you come in the restaurant and I say hi I'm Jeff uh, what can I get for you today no I'm good this is all looks good to me I'm like hey if you could get any pizza delivered to your house right now what would it be oh you know it'd be a pineapple Canadian bacon uh, pepperoni and jalapeno and I go great what's your name you say Jonathan I say Jonathan I'm Jeff how many slices would you like three you make that pizza for you give you three slices of it put the rest of it on the buffet. And then the other guests can come up and experience those flavors too. But really the key to CeCe's is making the pizzas that the people really want to eat. Um, mm -hmm. But eliminating all those kind of steps out of it has been very important. We don't have any stores in California. And I really, you know, feel bad for my brothers and sisters in the restaurant industry that are having to deal with those unbelievably high wages. I can't even imagine trying to be successful in a, environment that had that, you know, high of a high of a wage for some of our, our businesses. I'm sure some can support it, but you know, we've all watched the news and seen different things where folks are cutting back in different ways and just very thankful that in most of the areas we are, you know, Texas, Florida, you know, Virginia, Tennessee, Alabama, those kind of areas, 
um, that we've had a lot of uh, good luck with, uh, you know, finding people that we can afford and keeping that eight ninety nine price point has been really critical for us. How do you figure out like the proper number of pizzas to make to sort of avoid this type of waste that you talk about? That must be a real challenge, isn't it? You know, you it's actually the sorry, sorry to cut you out. Yeah, the busier uh, you are, the easier it is because mm -hmm. you're literally just keeping that thing full all the time, and the pizzas are flying off of there and. It's, you know, when you have a lower volume store or a lower volume day part, what we really lean heavily into is when the guest comes in, you know, we tell them, hey, here's the soup, here's the pasta, here's the salad, the desserts are at the end. Uh, if you don't see your favorite pizza, let us know. As a matter of fact, let me make you your favorite pizza right now. Then that next pizza you're making is what they want. You know, we've been talking here for a few minutes and, you know, I don't know what your favorite kind of pizza is. And, you know, it's hard to look at somebody and tell you what their favorite uh, pizza is. I'm, I'm not too bad at it. But, you know, it's uh, one of those deals where if you're putting pepperoni on the thing and the guest wants vegetables, then that right there, that's waste. That's something you shouldn't have made. Yeah. But the off-peak times are a little more difficult. So we kind of go to more of a personal buffet concept where I'll still make you whatever kind of pizzas you want. I'll let you have as much of it as you want. And then I, I, then that way I know you're hundred percent satisfied. Sometimes when we're slower, you know, quite frankly, we're better uh, at, at really getting that one-on-one -on -one with the guests. But my store in uh, Fort Worth on Sundays at my TCU store, that's the busiest day of the week. And you have lines out the door. Uh, you got three ovens cooking pizzas at three and a half minutes a piece, you know, setting, you know, two pizzas wide. And those three ovens are humming all day long. And, and those are easy, fun, and fast days. But um, those off-peak times or those slower stores or those bad weather days, it is a challenge to manage that waste. Mm -hmm. What is my favorite pizza? Well, I'm just going to look at you and, and guess that you love pepperoni. Am I wrong or right? I'm wrong. Well, I like pepperoni, but no, it's sausage and mushroom. Actually, it's go. a That's two-part answer. So I'll tell you this. So... Um, a two party. Number one is sausage and mushroom is my absolute. It's a good one. Like if you ask me what I'll, I will all the time. Um, but I actually judge a pizza concept based on the quality of their mushroom pizza. If so, I am agnostic about types. I think all types of pizza, Chicago, New York, Detroit, you know, uh, I, I mean, I I am very much agnostic. I see uh, glories in all of them, but to me, uh, you know, they all have their their you know they all have their their positives and negatives and whatnot. Um, and I find it all delicious, just you know, as long as it's well made. But I will determine whether a a pizza concept is good or not based upon its mushroom pizza. And if the mushroom pizza is good, to me, everything else is probably good. Is you got to get that right because if you don't do a good mushroom pizza, it sucks and it's not yeah. good. And I want to throw it in the trash. But anyway, that is my that is my mushroom pizza policy. Um, in case you and which I'm sure everybody needed to know that. So what what is gonna what's what's the plans for for CC's this year? Well, back to your mushroom thing. That uh, for a long time we had canned mushrooms, and oh, we've gone to fresh mushrooms. And thank you. It's amazing uh, how many folks that made a huge difference for uh, me included, because that's one of my favorites, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so it's really interesting how people are very particular. And I think that's the beauty of CC's is I will make you they will make you whatever you want. If you came to the store and you said, hey, I want canned mushrooms. We have a thing called, you know, jump the counter, whatever it takes. We'll go to the grocery store and get them if you have a minute to wait. But, like, yeah. we really know how specific, mm -hmm. you know, we have flatbread, the Detroit, the regular style pizzas. So those things are very, very uh, important to get them exactly what they want. Yeah. Thank you on the canned, canned mushrooms, by the way. And if anybody listening to this uses canned mushrooms and you know who you are. There you go. Stop it because they're gross. So, yeah, yeah. I am, oh, man. Yeah, I am definitely picky. But what's happening at CCC? Let's let's talk about uh, what's coming up. What do, you, what do you foresee in the next couple of years for you guys? Well, besides the account aforementioned uh, technology and leveraging all that technology and on the games, 
um, our marketing team and our innovation uh, team here at CC's has really come up with, we showed our FAC yesterday at one of our stores in the colony, uh, Texas, all of the new innovation that's coming out. And if I, if I talk too much about it from a flavor perspective, my uh, CMO will kill me. But it's uh, we've got some flavors and stuff I've never seen offered in a, a pizza chain before. Um, we shot a new commercial, the second iteration of our CC Pizzini, our official little three-inch tall founder uh, that we have that we ran a commercial with last year. We shot the second version of that. It'll be launching out in March. So we got a really new uh, good ad, ad campaign coming, and I think uh, you know from a from a larger standpoint of development. We have a lot of folks that have expressed interest in growing CCs, um, whether it's our franchisees uh, that exist or managers that are turning into franchisees or from outside the system. We're really starting to get some traction there. Uh, so that's, you know, the next couple of years, our dance card's pretty full with everything that we've got going on at uh, CCs. Yeah, super. Let's, uh, let me end with this one, let me tell you my CC story, Jeff. Okay. Is uh, so I uh, I am actually a fan, and in dating back years, um, one of I used I spent I live in Minnesota and have for nearly two decades. Um, but I spent six years down in Charleston, and uh, one of my best friends, um, you know, still lives down there, and uh, and we became best friends in part because we were going to. We didn't know each other very well, uh, but we were all we were both going with a, a group of mutual friends to a CC's, a bunch of guys. It was going to be CC's and then a movie, um, and and we ended up getting stuck at CC's together because nobody else showed up. It was just the two of us with this guy I barely knew, and so we ended up sitting there talking and eating pizza together for for a while. We've been awesome friends ever since then, and now every time I go down there and visit him. We always go to a CC's as a rule. So you got to, just for what that's worth. Yeah, that's a great, uh, the franchisee, that's another one that started out as a manager and became mm -hmm. a franchisee. His name's Pete Bojanowski. He's got three stores down there. And uh, Charleston's a great uh, market. But yeah, I know it's it's funny. Uh, I think it's probably, you know, being with CC since 1992, uh my experience is kind of like yours. I've made a lot of friends <laughs> mm -hmm. working at CC's over over the years, but I love that. I love that story. That's what we're all about. So that's great. Yeah. So, but Jeff, this was fantastic. A lot of fun. Really appreciate you joining me this week on the podcast. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Anytime. And that should do it for this week's episode of A Deeper Dive, which was edited, as always, by Spoons, artwork by Nico Hines. And you may find this and other episodes of the podcast on our website at www restaurantbusinessonline.com backslash article backslash deeper dash dive or you may subscribe on spotify or apple podcast i'm jonathan mays your host podcast producer and the editor-in-chief of restaurant business thank you for listening